All right, this is our next episode of True Wrestling Fans Discussions, considering the career of CM Punk. This is part three. I'm your host, Mike. I'm Frank. It's, this is going to be the, the very interesting one. This is the, the high of his career and the very low of his career at WWE, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. We, we're going to start off this one in 2012 um, at the Royal Rumble. Uh, we talked about he was already WWE champion. Punk uh, right now starts beating. He beats Dolph Ziggler despite Laurinaitis acting as the enforcer for this one because now he's gone away from Triple H uh, and now he's focused on Mr. People Power. And the, 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 the Monday Night Raws that he, he pulled on this guy and then the insults were just, they were classic. I'm not yeah. going to go into all of them. We'll be here all night. You know what? They, you know what this was? This was the poor man's version of Stone Cold versus Vince McMahon. Because I didn't like Laurinaitis. Laurinaitis was nowhere. Nobody likes Laurinaitis. He was nowhere near the heel as Vince was. You know? No. Punk, Punk was fine in the role that he was playing, but Laurinaitis was garbage. And they try to do, they try to do it again, and it didn't work. It just didn't work. Not for me, at least. I don't know how you felt. I didn't care for. It. I didn't like Laurinaitis. I, I think. For for Punk to pull this off with the pipe bombs, I need I I they they needed somebody in the management role, the the higher up not or the authority. I don't want to use that word, but they needed somebody out there for him to voice his his stuff against. And since uh, it wasn't going to be Vince McMahon, because if you do that, then everybody's going to automatically think you're trying to duplicate yeah. Austin McMahon. So he did it on Triple H, but Triple H had to kind of back away to do his actual job. After after he comes out of retirement to beat CM Punk and then goes back into retirement. Exactly. He goes back into the back into the shadows till he's needed again. Uh, right. Literally came out of retirement just to squash this guy. Unbelievable. And that wasn't supposed to be the first yeah. time he did it either. Yeah, so we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah. So Laurinaitis becomes the acting head honcho. So then obviously Punk is going to go at him. So, I mean, they needed an authority figure to do it. It it only made sense. So on January 30th, 2012, now on Monday Night Raw, during a champion versus champion match between Punk and Daniel Bryan, Chris Jericho now returns. You know, all of a sudden he's back in the mix again and attacked both of those guys. Jericho now uh, with that, he earned a, a match against CM Punk on February 20th, 2012 on Monday Night Raw for a match at WrestleMania 28. The storyline behind this one, I, I didn't like. This was where um, the, um, the, the no alcohol and stuff really came into play because yeah. Jericho used this against him. He, Jericho was using his psychology on Punk, focusing on, his, like I said, his alcoholic father and his drug addicted sister. They brought all that into the mix. Uh, also stated that Punk's straight edge philosophy was paranoia to avoid the same fate. So, and then Jericho vowed to turn Punk to alcohol by winning the title from him. Jesus. Again, they, they went a little above and beyond on this one, yeah. in my opinion. Laurinaitis added the stipulation that the title could change hands by, by disqualification now. So now he's stacking the deck against Punk as well. Lo and behold, Punk beats Jericho at WrestleMania, which I kind of had a feeling it was. So, good for him. Their feud continued through Extreme Rules in a Chicago street fight. He's Punk the champion? Also- He's the champion at WrestleMania? Punk, yes. And what was the main event of that WrestleMania, if you remember? I This is going to make a point later on. Oh, he's not. He never He never main evented. No, he didn't. You're right. Uh, what was this, 2012? Main event of uh, this WrestleMania was actually John Cena and The Rock. Right. So, so no title match was the main event. These two guys uh, took the show from the previous year when The Rock was the host of WrestleMania. Yeah. So, so Punk, seen, Punk, Punk's still not re- main eventing WrestleMania despite being the yeah. top champion. And, and and not to get into the whole story yet, um, it's understandable why the, the, the Rock was huge. It was his first match in eight years, right? First match in eight years, I believe. So it's understandable why he would headline to a degree. And maybe he even had it in his contract. I don't even know. But you're going to see a pattern here about how CM Punk is the hottest guy in the business and not getting the main event spot at WrestleMania. Seriously. And, and, and I've always said this, and you, you've you heard me say it, that the, the WWE Championship match, to me, should be the main event of WrestleMania. 
Not only it's, that, it's, I mean, it's, it's your top was, title. Not only that, Punk is the guy. He's the, the hottest guy. The Rock, on the the Rock is just right coming now. in. He's just coming in there part time, you know. Exactly. He's he comes he comes in. He's stealing the show. And and by the way, this is not going to be the first time that he comes in to steal the spotlight. Nope. I'm gonna get to that in a few minutes. Oh, so because CM Punk's gonna pay the price on that too. And I and I didn't like that, especially when they did when you knew this was coming four months early, because he came. I believe it was the end of the summer and said, oh, yeah, I've been told that in January I'll, at the Rumble, I'll be the number one contender. Oh, really? Oh, got to love these part timers coming in and just claiming title matches. I, it's the only thing I don't like about when they bring them back briefly. It's just yeah, and I love the just, I love the Rock. He's one of my favorite wrestlers exactly. of all time. But so why? I, I just don't agree how he did yeah. it, how this mm-hmm. was done. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, so going now, we, uh, we're at over the limit. Punk was successful against Daniel Bryan, which was a great match. I love when those two guys fight. Man. Oh, yeah, they always have good matches. I, I'm actually uh, – AEW is growing on me. Just a quick side note. So I'm actually looking forward to when they – yes, it is a little bit. Not much. It is right. a little bit. But I am looking forward to at least one more time those two guys getting in the ring in AEW, and I know it's going to happen. I'm a, Look, I'm a wrestling fan. Some matches intrigue me. Yes, there, all the talent is going over there, so I'm happy. I'm, I'm glancing a little bit, but I'm not portraying WWE. Relax. It's not like I'm going to pay for one of their pay per views. Maybe. Anyway, uh, he beats Daniel Bryan after reversing Bryan's submission hold. Uh, Bryan and Punk's feud now continued through No Way Out. Uh, Punk won again against both him and Kane. So, I mean, this guy is red hot, just running through the, the, the roster. Unfortunately, it's also giving him a big head too. Which the one thing I didn't, the one thing I liked about his title reign was that he was a fan favorite on top of the world. Unfortunately, that's now going to start to change with the, with the ego. At Money in the Bank, he beats Daniel Bryan again in a no disqualification match, where AJ Lee was the special guest referee, which I thought was cool. And this this now ended the feud. Um, on July 23rd, 2012, this was the Raw's 1,000th episode. Punk defeat, uh, defended the title against the Money in the Bank winner, John Cena, and lost by disqualification now after Big Show interfered. So now you see where kind of we're going for, to, for SummerSlam. Earlier in the night, this is where I just brought it up early, uh, a few minutes ago, The Rock interrupted Punk to announce that he would be wrestling for the WWE title at the 2013 Royal Rumble. We didn't need this at his hottest moment because now everybody's going to, they, they, they know that, okay, you interrupted him. He's the champion. We kind of see that this is where we're going to kick off the new year. So enjoy the title while you can for the next few months because you're going to lose it. I, I already saw this coming when I saw this. And the thing was, I think we already knew that he was going to fight Cena twice, right at WrestleMania. So I think at this so, point we already knew, right? Rock, you kinda, we already knew we, that it was setting up. You you kind of had the feeling because uh, after the first match, you knew there would have to be uh, some type of. Or maybe I remember re- re- I was probably reading something. It was out there. If it wasn't on storyline, it was out there. People knew it was, it was on social media that they were yeah. that Vince McMahon was looking they to do a sequel. One to and it. two, yeah, it was one. Back, back to back, yeah, because the first one was so hot that to duplicate it again but meanwhile the hottest guy in your business right now you're not even looking at him you're looking at cena who's not champion a part-time guy and your champion over here Dwayne. making all this money Dwayne. yeah i love when he did that to him. <laughs> not the rock Dwayne. Yeah. remember he did that to uh triple h too he goes mm-hmm. this is not cm yeah. punk talking to triple h this is phil brooks tra- talking to paul levesque and everybody was like oh I thought that was cool. He always got real. That the, the reality era. That's mm-hmm. what they called it with his pipe bombs. So now, when Big Show interfered, The Rock saved Cena from Big Show. Don't know why. And then Punk attacked Rock, and this made him turn heel. So not only your 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 top baby face just went heel on your part time thanks to your part time wrestler. Yep. I, I did not like where this was going. I really like getting ready, and I still rooted for Punk regardless if he was heel or not, because what he was doing and how he was holding the belt, it all was right. But what they were doing to him, 
wasn't. It felt like now he's just a placeholder for the belt. Like Rock just came in and said, do me a favor, hold on to that. I'll be back in a few in six months to claim that. What's wrong? It's just, yeah. It's Vince, man. It's been, it's always going to go back to the guys like, like Brock, like Brock, like Cena. It's always going to go to that. It's never going to be, he's never going to have faith in anybody else. And it's just, I don't, I don't understand that. The following week now, Punk justified his actions to saying he was tired of people like the rock and Cena overshadowing him. And I have to agree with him. Yeah. hundred, hundred percent. He said when the WWE champion should be the focus of the company. And again, 100% yeah, agree. It's true. The thing is, they're making him a heel, though. So, you, you've just, yeah, you've, you've just shattered his baby face image yeah. and, and for, for no reason. This could have kept going. And just, and I agree with him. You're, you're the champion. You are the guy. You are not the mid card. And, and to this day, I've never understood why the WWE title match or even the Universal is always the, like, the fourth match on the card. Mm-hmm. No, one and two, it should be up there. You're your champions. You should be having the main event status. Bottom line. And I, and I, and and just for the record, I'm not saying that the women's title can't be the main event either. I'll, I'll put that on record too. But I'm just, no, don't give me that look. You can't tell me that Bianca versus Sasha this past year at WrestleMania Night One didn't tear the house uh, down. As I, didn't, main event. I didn't watch it, so I can't tell you. Well, you should have. Just it. like a couple of years ago, Charlotte, uh, <laughs> Becky, and Ronda tore the house down for the main event of WrestleMania, and it was good. So I'm just. I'm just putting it out there. Don't give me that look. In any event now, at SummerSlam, Punk retained his title against Big Show and Cena in a triple threat match. Over the next several weeks, Punk demanded respect now from the people like uh, Raw General Manager AJ Lee, which that was funny when they made her uh, GM. Yeah. Now they were really stretching to find a, a, yeah, a, yeah. It was like, somebody in the authority role. Um, also from Jerry Lawler and Bret Hart. Boy got put into this one. During his feud with Cena, Punk aligned himself now with Paul Heyman, which I thought was cool. He was a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah. And I really thought, I don't, I don't know if you if you watched a whole lot back then, but I really thought Heyman was going to be starting a stable here because it was, Cena, uh, Punk wasn't the only guy he, he, that was aligning themselves with him. So I really thought he was going to get himself a bunch of guys besides Brock. But they just, they, yeah, they, they never, never. They, they didn't follow through with it, which... I thought they, they should have. Unfortunately, one of them might, might have been Ryback. God help us. Oh, Jesus. Exactly. At Night of Champions, Punk retained his title after he fought Cena to a draw. By this point now, I'm getting done. I'm getting tired of Cena getting the, always these matches with Punk, man. There was a plenty of other guys that could have been fighting Punk that were more mm. deserving. They did have good matches, though. I mean, they did, but how many times have you? I know. Okay, I know. how many times have you seen Cena versus Orton? I was about to say that, or or Edge versus or Edge versus Orton, right? Yes, or I, I could go on just, and on. Yeah, but how many how many times how many times can you see these before you go enough already? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just like if if Hogan and Flair want one more match, where you're going to give it to them against each other? Yeah, no, it's too much. So, in any event, at Hell in the Cell. Punk defeats Ryback, who Big replaced guy. an injured John Cena. Now, in the beginning, I did like Ryback because the, he had that Goldberg type look. And yeah, I mean, he was the poor man's Goldberg. The, I like to feed me more. I, that that was cool. He had he had the look, but unfortunately, what was hurting him was the fact that he was hurting everybody. He else. He was hurting everybody else. Yeah, and nobody mm-hmm. wanted to work with him. So. He defeated uh, Ryback in a Hell in a Cell match with the help of referee Brad Maddox to, to retain his title. So now he's really full-on heel here. This also ended Ryback's 38-match unbeaten streak. So sorry, you're, you're not getting to 173 yeah. now. <laughs> came close, came close. Yeah, just missed it by a hair. So at Survivor Series, Punk defended his title against John Cena and Ryback in a triple threat match. This one actually wasn't too bad. I do remember this one. Ryback being in it kind of saved it from another Cena Punk straight up match. This match was made by Vince McMahon, obviously. Punk won the match by pinning Cena following interference from the the debuting Shield. Yeah, who apparently initially uh, he was supposed to be be involved with Punk, right? Exactly. He, he, He kept pushing for a faction. Yeah. 
it would have made sense, yeah, especially have, uh... going into The Rock and everything leading to that. Yeah. But Vince thought that them being on their own, doing what they were doing was better. It worked yeah, out. What they ended up doing? They ended up saying that Heyman, was it that Heyman hired them? I don't remember. This was a long time ago. They, they, um, they, there was a couple of speculations of who right. was doing what, but they I never, think... it never fell to fruition. It never came alive. It, and it just wound up being the Shield doing what the Shield wanted to mm. do. But I thought their debut out of nowhere was really cool that, that night. No, it was Michael, well done. Yeah. You hear Michael Cole, that, that's Seth Rollins and that's yeah. Dean Ambrose. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're you oversold it a little. They bit, were cool was, when cool. I and when we'll obviously get this get into this when we do a shield episode. Yeah, but uh, I loved how they used to come out of the crowd, especially in the beginning when they yes. used to, they had the you know literally they had the shields, you know, like yes, was, uh, those it, vests, it was, the vests, awesome. I should say. Yeah, it was it was it, it, was, was, cool. it was very yeah. awesome, mm-hmm. and especially how they made Ambrose the U.S. champ and Rollins and Reigns were the tag champions, <laughs> and still to this day when I see them on SmackDown, the two of them. I, I'm always I'm reminded mm-hmm. of it, and hope to God they don't do any more Shield reunions. Yeah. I, well, obviously you can't because Moxley's not there, but just it, it's got by now it's got to be over and done. But back then, man, they it was really well done. It was especially the few with the Wyatts. That that'll definitely be covered extensively mm-hmm. in that episode. So, on unfortunately now, but on December fourth, twenty twelve, Punk had surgery to repair a partially torn meniscus. And from a guy that's had his surgery done five times on that, believe me, that that is painful. Mm-hmm. On December 5th, 2012, Punk became the longest reigning WWE champion in the past 25 years when he hit 381 days, surpassing John Cena's 380-day reign. Awesome, man. Congratulations. I'm glad he broke his, uh, homeboy's record. Should have been, even, should have been even longer than that. I'm wondering if The Rock never came back, how much longer it would have gone. Or if Triple H hadn't squashed him. We're getting into that. Yeah. And, and no, believe, I'm saying and, before. I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When he when he had it and then he lost yeah. it. And then one of, yeah, I got you. So now we get into 2013, unfortunately. Punk returned to action January 7th, 2013. Excuse me. On Monday Night Raw, retaining the title against. Ryback. It feels like these are the only two guys on Raw anymore. Yeah. And then at some point he injured Ryback hurt him a couple times and he had it out with Ryback backstage and he yelled at him and he said, You're either what do you say? You're either reckless or 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 you're dumb. And he's like, Oh, I'm dumb. I think he told him I'm dumb. Yeah, because he hurt him again um later that year. I guess yeah, to that a couple, a second, a couple times. It's, it's, it's like a few times that he's done it, and yeah. every time Punk was told you're gonna work on him, he's like, "Why?" He called him steroid head, right, or something like that. that yeah, what he referred to him as he could steroid not stand steroid this guy. Man. <laughs> and he's right. I mean, he 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 had a plus matches throughout 2013, as I'm about to cover, and he still gets handed this moron. I guess the the only thing I could think of was maybe they thought, well, well, Punk can make him look good. If he couldn't do it by now, he's not going to do it at all. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, at this point, they've had a good handful of matches, and several times he's been hurt. I mean, at this point, you just got to cut your losses and draft this dude to SmackDown. Mm. I mean, come on. In any event, he faces Ryback in a TLC match on Raw. He wins it thanks to the Shield. So this is where everybody's starting to think that, that he's in control of them. And he, again, as we've just talked about, he's really wanting to be in control of them. And, you know, I'm wondering how it would have panned out had they had done that. So on January 27, 2013, at the Royal Rumble, Punk faced The Rock. Now, if the Shield interfered, then Punk would be stripped of the title, which is ridiculous because if, he's, if they interfere, why wouldn't you just do this stipulation that it's a disqualification, The Rock wins the title. Why would you strip the man during a title match? Unless mm-hmm. if he wins by disqualification, after the fact, you we're taking the belt off you. It just didn't make any sense. Well, Punk told an interesting story, too, about The Rock before that match, how he had a meet-up with The Rock to, like, discuss the match, which he had no problem with, but that he met he went to The Rock's hotel or something, and, like, yeah. he goes in the room and there's, like, a bunch of people there. Like, The Rock's people are there. And then The Rock was kind of telling him how the match was going to go. And then I guess Punk didn't really want to make him look bad or anything, but he had to stand up for himself and say, no, we should do it this way. And then, like, after that, then they they became friends after that. But he said it was a very weird 
thing that he was happens. automatically being told like he was the rookie and the veterans like yeah. okay okay kid come here this is how this matches right. this is how we're and not it. only that it was like these non-wrestling people that were there and it was like yeah. this hollywood thing and it was very weird and but he Imagine said how, that, how that's going to make Punk feel, too. Yeah, he was, but he, credit to him, he stood up for himself. So. And then he said that it was smooth after that. He said it was just yeah. a, a weird incident. Yeah, but it's just like, uh, excuse me, I'm the guy with the title. You're the one coming in to visit. You're telling me how this match right. is going to go. I know Rock's a legend and everything, but still, that's that's, that's kind of weird. Give, give the champion at least the respect that he deserves. I mean, come on. But he did. Again, like you said, they, they squashed everything. Yeah. They, there was no animosity, at least not that we know of. So, in any event, Punk originally pinned The Rock at the Royal Rumble after The Shield uh, put The Rock through a table while the lights were out. I remember this, and I thought that was that was cool. He, they found a stipulation. They found a loophole through that. Okay, you didn't see us technically do it. Um, but in any event, Vince came out, and rather than strip Punk, he restarted the match, which I, then I knew where we were heading here. And Punk lost the title, ending his reign at 434 days. And I remember this one because the, the Rock had his mom was at ringside. And I remember this is where he, when he took the, the armband off, this is where he started doing that. Uh, and it was a little cheesy. But when he restarted the match, I knew this is where it was ending. And, and unfortunately, I think it ended too soon. I think it could have gone on more, but unfortunately, because The Rock was coming back, they put the belt on they him. So we, know, so we know now where we're heading for, yeah, they were for WrestleMania. Back. So now CM Punk is no longer champion, unfortunately, and this was one of the most enjoyable reigns I had had. If you hold the belt right and you have a good look, I don't care how long you're the champion. Like, Not to get sidetracked real quick, with Roman Reigns right now, he could be champion another year as long as what he's doing right now is working. As long as it keeps working, I, I don't care how long you hold it. If, if you're bad at it, for God's sakes, take the belt off the map. But for CM Punk, everything was working. All, in my opinion, he just needed new opponents other than Cena and Ryback. I mean, come on. And then you give him one and this guy beats you. And he hadn't had a match in, what was it, eight years at this point. Well, he had already fought, he fought Cena the year before, right? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, but but either way, either way, he had been out of the out of the game. Yeah, yeah. he hadn't wrestled a, a full schedule in full eight schedule, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe even longer than that, because in two thousand and four, he wasn't even wrestling full time. Actually, a full schedule would go back to 02. 02, yeah. Because even 03 was part time when he came back in uh, February. Yep. yep. It was February to April, and that mm-hmm. was it. And yep. Then 04 was was just WrestleMania. And not even. Not even 02, because he leaves in the summer, too. What are we talking about? So then, And then 2001, <laughs> he wasn't even there. For but he only schedule. left for a little while, though. It wasn't that long. It, what was it? Uh, two two months. Yeah. Three? No, three months. It was like three months. It was like three months. It was over the summer. Yeah. Came back for the invasion. Nine out of 12, I guess that's So tech, So technically, all right, 2000. We'll go back to 2000. Either way, it was, a, it was an eternity. <laughs> this wow. man has a wrestle full yeah. forever. Jesus oh, my Christ. God. Dude, we could just keep going. Yeah. <clears throat> in, in any event now, um, WWE recognized this reign as the longest title reign of the modern era. That was after 1988 um, until the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar broke the record in June, uh, what was it, 2016, I believe? Yeah, they had to do that just to squash. 2018, punk. I believe it was. They had to do that just because they didn't want Punk. Punk's name brought up anymore. They, yeah, they they like like New Day broke Demolition's record because of the heat they had. They got they obliterated um, CM Punk's record. And if I honestly think if Brock didn't come back now, I think Roman, uh, well Roman might break that record anyway. But I think they were well on their way yeah. to shattering it if he wasn't going to return. But Punk not even holding the record now uh, at that point. I mean, I just whatever man, just like. Ric Flair is not going to be the all-time champion anymore. You know they're going to break that now, thanks to Dark Side. So now at Elimination Chamber, Punk gets his rematch against The Rock. Again, The Rock looks makes him look bad in this match, too. Now CM Punk is lost. But CM Punk has still got the popularity yeah. from, the, from the fans and still believes that he can do it, but still wants the main event WrestleMania. So... On February 25th, 2013, on Raw, Punk faced Royal Rumble winner John Cena for his title shot and now loses. 
That was actually now, a good match. That was actually a good match. I remember that one. It was, but now the pattern of 2013 is you're losing. You're losing, match. losing. Yeah. He's... You want you want all your matches, and now you're gonna 2013. You're gonna lose everything. So now you're you're really coming. It's, yeah. It's coming down. Yeah, that's done. That was done on purpose. I believe so. In March, Punk then set his sights on ending Undertaker's undefeated streak. And when they announced this match, I was I was ecstatic. I was like. This is the this yeah, should no. be the main event at WrestleMania, and it was in a lot of ways. It was the best yes, match on was. that card. Yeah, absolutely. He but... he he took Undertaker to lengths that Taker hadn't been taken to in years. Yeah. And the storyline that I'm about to get leading up to it made it even better. Um, <clears throat> he he wanted to take something away from the fans, as he put it, quote unquote, as he believed that they had taken the WWE title away from him. He beat Big Show, Randy Orton, and Sheamus in a fatal four-way match on March 4th, 2013 on Raw uh, for a match against The Undertaker. Thank God, because I didn't want to see him fight any of those other dudes. Now, after the real-life death of, of Paul Bearer uh, on March uh, 5th, 2013, Punk was involved in a storyline disrespecting Taker and Paul Bearer. Now, the, I, felt, you know, I felt bad because I love Paul Bearer. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, he passed away. Using it in the storyline with the Undertaker, obviously Taker had to be cool with it. And yeah, uh, no, of was, course, yeah, he had to have been. You know, they, he they didn't do it. What's the word I'm looking for? The, distasteful with this feud. So at least that was good. Um, he, he, Paul, yeah, if I can get it out. The uh, Punk uh, actually stole Bear's trademark urn at this point. So now he's he's got that in his possession. And unfortunately, Punk at WrestleMania 29 lost to The Undertaker. But, I mean, he did everything but hit this dude with the kitchen sink. This was a great match. Even though he lost, I believe he won. And the fans won, too, because they benefited yeah. from this. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame. It was a great match. It was the best match on the card. Um, it was way better than the title match. I'm sorry. The title match was trash. Um, it was, because Rock wound up getting hurt. Yeah. I think he busted his rib. Yeah, so, yeah just... just... But they just keep punk. Punk just can't get into that main event spot at WrestleMania, man. They no. just can't get in. And I was hoping at this point, I'm like, all right, if he, and as I'm watching, I'm like, okay, if he bounces back this year, maybe there's the possibility for next year because he's still one of your top mm-hmm. guys. Um, soon after this, uh, Punk began a storyline where he uh, he told Paul Heyman to no longer accompany him to ringside, like he he was going away from him at this point. Um, Punk was actually attacked by Lesnar, turning Punk uh, face again, because now Brock Lesnar's back on the scene. This led, uh, and this was at, because um, you remember Paul Heyman cost CM Punk at Money in the Bank, because uh, he uh, grabbed him uh, as he was going up the ladder, so this is where that started. This led to SummerSlam, which Punk was ecstatic, and I've, and I've heard this uh, podcast from him many times how he was, and I'm not going to use all the F-bombs he used in that one. But he was like, oh, yeah, we're going to F and tear the house down. I'm going to work with Brock. Well, we're, we're going to steal the show like I did with Taker. Everything's going to work. This, uh, this is going to be my bounce back. And he tore the house down with Lesnar. He held his own. I got to admit, because he gave up, what, about 120-something pounds to him. And uh, the, the match uh, was a no-disqualification match. Punk lost to him on Heyman's interference. Obviously, you knew he was going to. But, again, his loss was actually a, 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 a win because he how he looked facing him. I mean, Lesnar has destroyed guys that size before. Yeah, that was a great match. Those and there's no, there was no coming back for them like Finn Balor and Ricochet for the longest time. Lesnar destroyed them. Vince gave up on him. Vince still didn't quite give up on Punk at this point. But Punk was still determined, no matter what, to main event WrestleMania and to get his title back. And I still believe he, at this point he's... By this point, he should have been getting that shot. So the feud with Heyman continued facing other clients of his. At Night of Champions, Punk faced Curtis Axel and Paul Heyman, which I thought was a way step down for CM Punk. Yeah, Curtis Axel. Jeez. I mean, I understand he's Mr. Perfect's son. And by this point, he was looking for, if not already had, the Intercontinental Championship. But come on. A guy like Punk facing Axel. Who is this benefiting? It's not benefiting Punk. Not at all. 
And then uh, it was a handicap elimination match. Punk lost that match too, by the way, when um, uh, to Heyman when Ryback interfered. So now we got another garbage Ryback match in our future. And this is where Punk got pissed off because now he's like, I got to work with him. And, and around this time, I believe it was that Punk was, um, his injuries were catching up to him. And he was also wanting to do take some time off as well. But he kept going through. Yeah, there were some crazy stories about he had knee surgery and then he wasn't even ready. And then they put him on the card. Like they already, they advertised him even before he even knew that he was wrestling. And they're like, oh yeah, we have you on the card and something else. It might have even been the same incident where they medically cleared him over the phone. He hadn't even seen his doc, like the surgeon that operated on him. He's yeah, like, he it, tells it him, was... Go ahead. he tells him, like, he tells them, look, I'm not even medically cleared. And they're like, oh, don't worry about it. He cleared you already. Like he clear- I'm like, he hasn't even seen me. How is he going to clear me? Exactly. So it, it was just like, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. But he was still determined to knock out and have these five-star matches, regardless of who it was. Um, well, now we're right back. But... And at, at, <sighs> no matter how many times. At Hell in a Cell, Punk beat Ryback and Heyman inside the the cell ending the feud and i believe this is where one of the times that he uh hurt uh he, he, he hurt his pelvis uh or something but again yeah, he was... got hurt in this match i'm not 100 percent on the injury what he injured but i do know that he had said that he got hurt because he, he even told him like brett told goldberg please don't right, hurt right. me and what did he do right. so now next up and th- this was an interesting feud, and I liked it, the, the Wyatt family. And at Survivor Series, uh, Punk and Brian beat Harper and Rowan. Well, cause, And then they – because they had that whole storyline where Daniel Bryan was going to join them but didn't, whatever. But the two of them teaming together was a pretty good match. I, I enjoyed that one. <clears throat> His, the next feud now for him after this was The Authority, where Punk beat The Shield – in a uh, one-on-three handicap match. Yeah, you know, there's a funny story. I don't know if you know the story about this match. Uh, How the, I think it was like the day of, like each of the road agents kept coming up to him and they're like, oh, listen, um, you got to make Roman look strong. And he's like, okay, no, all right, no problem. Then another agent comes up to him. Hey, you know, you got to make Roman look strong. And he's like, yeah, I know. I was already told that. Then somebody else comes up and he's like, how many times are you people going to come up to me and tell me, uh, make Roman look strong? He's like, no, you know what? I'm going to go out there. I'm going to, I'm going to squash all of them. I'm going to make all of them look like garbage. Right. And then, and then, and, and then they tell him, oh, but you're going over. He's like, but why am I going, why am I going over? If, if, How am I supposed right, to get right, him right, over, right, make right. him look strong if I'm right. going over? And there's over. three of them and it's three of them again. Exactly. Oh, what am I supposed to get the beat down from, from him, yeah, but squash yeah. the other two? He was like, well, he it doesn't was, make any sense. Right, it's yeah. a catch 22. Yeah. Got to make Roman look strong. Well, the, the, how this one ended was when Roman accidentally speared Ambrose by accident. And Punk gets the victory. But again, yeah, like you said, three times, make Roman look strong. Oh. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Because, you know, at that point, Vince is – Roman is Vince's guy at this point. He's yeah, seen – he already uh, – right. He already had his sights set yeah. on the future. He's already in love with him. He's already in love with him. Like at least black. he came up with this gimmick right now. I, at least that's working. Just it only, took, only took eight years. It took eight years. Only. Some guys, it takes longer. So now, unfortunately, we're rolling into 2014, the year I do not like to talk about, about CM Punk because there's a whole lot that we're going to cover right now in this. Punk was the number one entry into the Royal Rumble. Thanks to Kane. And when they did this to him, I thought – the first thing I thought was Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's going to pull out and win the Rumble. Right, right. And he's going to defy the odds against the authority, and he's going to go to WrestleMania. I'm like, this is it. This is how he gets over on him. Punk was eliminated. He eliminated Kane early in the match. Kane returned later to eliminate him, which now I thought was, was complete trash. Now, as far as matches go, this is it for CM Punk. This was his last thing. Now, there's a we're we're gonna get into all the stories and all everything that happened uh, right now. So, yeah. go ahead. The, do you, you know? Do you know? Off. Yeah. All right. There's a whole behind the scenes Royal Rumble fiasco because 
apparently punk had like some uh some growth some swelling on his back i believe it was on his back and he asked the wwe doctor hey you know take a look at this and he's like oh it's nothing oh it's nothing and this, this went on for a little while they gave him some antibiotics the antibiotics were actually making him sick or whatever um he was not in good shape at all still going through it and then now at first it wasn't it wasn't really hurting him but eventually gets to the point where it is hurting him and and he's like dude cut this cut this thing off he tells the doctor he's like no i can't cut it off because you got to go out there and wrestle and i might have to stitch it and i can't do that and he's like what so he ends up going to he wrestles and then he gets i think he gets concussed i think coffee kingston kicks him or something concusses him and there's a part where he waves the doctor and the doctor's like oh what am i supposed to do like it goes to show you how serious the wwe takes these concussions or whatever despite what they say yeah so after the match, he goes back to stage and tells, again, the WWE doctor, cut this off. And he's like, oh, no, I can't because I already have you on uh, some antibiotics already. And I would have to give you more antibiotics. Come to find out. Yeah, this is crazy. Come to find oh out. God. Punk actually goes to his own doctor. He had a staph infection, a really bad staph infection. And they said that he, the doctor said, how long have you had this? And he said, like, three months, whatever it was. And the doctor told me, you know, you should be dead right now with this. That's crazy. That's a crazy story. Oh my god! So yeah, I, I remember hearing something along the lines of that. <clears throat> Again, it's been years since I, you know, heard the full thing. Mm-hmm. So we're since there's so much to cover through, uh, for the 2014 exit of CM Punk, we're gonna leave it here with the the Royal Rumble being his final match in the WWE. And in our next episode, we're gonna discuss the entire length of this just to me, a nightmare exit for him. So much to cover on this, uh, what they did to him on his wedding day, everything. It's just, there's a whole lot to cover. And that'll be our next episode of CM Punk's exit. All right. So you guys make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon.